I'm Mukul Ahmed, I'm a theatre director uh, based in London and in uh, Bangladesh, Dhaka. So I try to divide myself in both places and um, yeah, I keep on my creative journey here. That's interesting because um, you're originally a doctor, were you not, or something like that? Last century, yes. <laughs> How did you do that jump then? Um, well, if you, if you, technically, it's OT, is operation theatre, isn't it? So I jumped from one theatre to another theatre, that's the difference. But yeah, that was a very kind of um, um, turn of my uh, life's journey. Yeah. So what inspired you? A um, few things actually, because I was in a so-called socialist country. I was trained as a doctor in Bulgaria. But I was surrounded by many musicians, theatre makers, filmmakers. So I think that, I mean, subconsciously they <laughs> inspired me. And upon arrival in this country, I just, it just happened. Possibly uh, theatre chose me in a fine morning. <laughs> and I, was, I had an opportunity to work at the Half Moon Theatre. Uh, so that was a tremendous opportunity. And that's the starting point, and I never looked back. Yeah. When you were younger, did you were you interested in theatre? Um, not actively, not actively. Just I admired theatre, uh, but it is like of any Asian kid that I was always into the films. So becoming one of these, that you know, just taking the shirt off, dancing, that kind of, you know. But that is a kind of very limited dream that, yes, film, film. Um, Theatre was like always, I, I like Indian classical music or Western classical music. I uh, had a kind of, uh, kind of reverence that, yes, maybe one day I'll be a part of theatre. That was the dream, actually, yeah. And your brother in Bangladesh? I was brought up, yeah. Yeah. So the kind of theatre there would be very different from the kind of theatre here, wouldn't it? Yes. Um, I am not an authority and I left very early like a, 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 as a teenager and I didn't have any contact or connection with Bangladeshi theatre. But it's very vibrant. Now when I go back, I try to educate myself. Um, it's very vibrant. So this is like Bangladeshi theatre, which is the... I, I don't want to... Level it as as uh, folk theatre. No, it's a very how shall I say indigenous their own theatre. And the other one is the proscenium theatre, which is very Western influenced. I'd, I'd say the British when they ruled, and that is the legacy, and they're still continuing. So there is a nice two parallels actually, two different narratives of theatre over there. So are these two parallels something that really interests you in terms of your theatre practice? Um, Indirectly, yes, yes, some elements. We all are influenced now as global citizens, isn't it, that we take from here, from there. Um, so yes, I, I think some elements are uh, influencing me non-stop, yeah. But do you find that your formative years actually play, you know, the influences then play a great part in what you are today as a, as a theatre practitioner? Yes, and that I would say that I am indebted to English theatre, in a sense, and Eastern European, because I, I saw lots of plays in Bulgaria when I was living there, then moved here. So I didn't, uh, that, that is my formative kind of, you know, the, yeah, yes. Yeah. So would you consider then that, you know, that what we call British South Asian theatre, or should we even call it that, do you think that's... Um, has any relevance or any importance at all? You talked about being a global citizen. Sure. I, very personally, I don't see any relevance. No. Uh, why? Um, why kind of that is the policy of uh, defining and confining? Hmm. Now, how come, why I should subscribe to that? Now, you, you are an artist. So artist has a unique um, identity in the world, isn't it? Nobody asked that Michelangelo or uh, um, uh, today's Ang Lee, where they come from. That an artist creating something we all are enjoying. That's the fundamental. Why then trying to uh, define? 
So I am very much against that because I'm not, uh, I haven't got anything to do with South Asia because I don't live there. I'm creating art here and I'm trying to negotiate to tell stories to the audience. They're based here. And why bringing that luggage here? This is my maybe inner monologue all the time. The conflict is all the time. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't subscribe or I don't identify myself as a um, uh, South Asian or British South Asian. Of course, the institutions possibly, they are trying to isn't it, box you. Because every time you have to take the box, isn't it? Not Asian, are you Bangladeshi, Indian, Pakistani? Uh, and so why that? If that's a democratic process, if we are talking about equality, why then that uh, boxing, uh, tick box? That is my question. Yeah. That's interesting because you talk about Michelangelo, but of course Michelangelo was very much sponsored by the church. And in fact, a lot of his great work is actually <laughs> very religious because the church sure. paid for it. Sure. In our day, we've got the Arts Council as one of our main funders paying sure. for it. And this kind of box ticking is something sure. that we all are very aware of. Now, how do you find yourself negotiating that, the funding boxes, and your own life, no boxing? Yeah, well, you have to do, because you are applying, yeah? So you, that is the inner conflict, or then you have to basically control the animal inside and say, look, just take the box. Hmm. And there, there is conflict also, because am I Bangladeshi, am I Indian, am I Muslim? So various uh, Bengalis, so various questions come, then you tick box, and then you realize again you cannot satisfy their needs. Meaning, what is their language, what they want. Mm. So it is a difficult kind of journey, I would say, of <laughs> filling in forms, applying for fundings. That's very humiliating at some points, actually. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting you should say it's humiliating, because do, I think funders possibly see a thread between the South Asian communities and cultures and they try and bomb this, you sure. know. How do you deal with that yourself? Um, it's a very, very difficult question, I believe, because I don't want to identify as South Asian. Hmm? Then you are competing and you are fighting within the system, in the British, within the British context, then part of you say, okay, if I take the box and if I get the funding, why not? So <laughs> there is a conflict actually all the time. I find it very dis disgraceful, distasteful, I'd say, hmm. that why not opening it the competition? Why not uh, funding according to merit. Why trying to kind of box people into that? That okay, he is good or she is good, fine, welcome. You have to compete within this um, rules and regulations. And if you are good, you will get it. If you are not, do try again and again. Yeah, so I think that the policy is very discriminatory. That's my, my personal view. Yeah. So can you give Excuse us me. any kind of concrete examples of how that has affected, how this funding uh, restrictions have affected what you really wanted to produce? Um, I'm sure that I, I mean, applications after applications, you know, when you do, what happens basically then you ask that are you an artist or a fundraiser? That is the two separate things. Now, the artist has to become the fundraiser, the manager. So that is a difficult journey, number one. Um, it's a big challenge. Of course, when you talked about Michelangelo, definitely he had to negotiate with the church, isn't it? That, okay, give me the money, I will talk your language. But he created global art that still today we are enjoying. Um, it affects because you get tired. I think, I don't want to use the word tired yet, but it takes a lot of your time. Every day I sit down and say, okay, I'll finish this application. So basically, morning doesn't start with your coffee and that what I'm going to create. The question is where the money is coming from. You, but still, I believe that we have the uh, fantastic uh, kind of, how shall I say the word, passion. So we are driven by passion. So we, I'm still uh, uh, trying to be as positive as possible. 
So how has that kind of um, affected your own artistic journey? Um, I, I think it limits your uh, kind of the possibilities. It doesn't stop. The journey is there, but it, it limits the maneuvering or the way you want to do, the stories you want to tell. So you have to uh, follow the policy of austerity that, okay, I have to cut this down. I have to cut, okay, instead of two musicians, I have to use recorded music, for example. Instead of a dancer, I have to kind of ask a, an actor to do that. So what happens that, I think compromising basically. So that limits and at the same time the compromise actually that you have to <laughs> get used to. So you think your artistic journey has been compromised? Uh, partly yes. yes, partly yes. So how do you deal with that as an artist? Um, various ways, you have to negotiate, you have to possibly change your policy, you have to um, tactically, you have to place yourself somewhere how you're going to sell your product, meaning that convincing the producer or uh, those who are supporting you in kind, how basically you convince them that yes, this is basic fitting into their artistic policy. So, um, this is basically maneuvering and selling your idea to others. Yeah. So, how would you track your actual journey from when you first started your first production yeah. to today? How's that been shaping? Um, I, I would still say that the devotion and the passion is there, of course, but it's shaping according to, um, we are much more kind of wiser, I believe, maturer, yeah? And we understand the game a little bit, yeah? And I think that I'm much cleverer than before, if not much shrewd or, you know, yeah, cunning. Yeah, you have to be cunning. Hmm. Um, in order to kind of survive in this jungle. Hmm. Then it is a very clear um, objective that you have to follow and also that what you want to pursue, isn't it? That if, if, if I, uh, I believe that my, if my conviction and persuasion is honest, I'll reach somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Huh. So, yes, it changed. Now I'm, I think that I'm much more confident. I'm into the system. You have to know the, rule of the rules of the game. So I think that I'm much more confident than when I started. Mm -hmm. So that is, and I, I'm much more at ease telling my stories. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about how you create your work? Which aspects of it do you do yourselves and which aspects sure. do you collaborate with other people? Okay, if I've got it right. Um, theatre, as we all know, or any form of, I mean, performing art is a collaborative art, isn't it? So, um, I'm very uh, kind of lucky in a sense, got brilliant writers who help me all the time. So, I float an idea, then uh, they help me to write or develop the script. Then a team of actors, I've got loyal actors, very talented, and uh, singers. Um, they come together, we float the idea, then they start working, they come back, they suggest, look, this is what I think, this is what yeah, we want to offer, what do you think? So it's a collaborative process all the time. Of course, as a director, as a creator, you take the final decision, it's a dictatorial way. But basically, it's a thing that is a democratic dictatorship, I would say. Um, uh, but I have a fantastic team that I, like I'm kind of draw from them, their ideas. Um, so whatever story I'm telling, it's not my story, it's our story, I believe. And it's interesting you say our story, because if we look at Shakespeare, he predominantly wrote for an English audience, because he was based in yeah. you know, England. Now you have really different audiences to deal with, because you live here and there's one audience, and then sure. you, Go to Bangladesh, sure. it's a completely different audience, which is marvelous. You've got yeah. two very different audiences. Now, how do you um, develop your work with these audiences in mind? Um, tricky question. Um, let me give you the example of Romeo and Juliet. Hmm. So, every society, every community, they have got their own Romeo and Juliet. 
people understand, people know about the story. So telling this kind of story, retelling, recreating the world, the imagination, um, actually favors your journey. Then that currency is easy to kind of buy, you know, the audience's kind of imagination. Um, so they, the story is there. Then you have to see that how you are going to tell this, your story. And I keep it slightly flexible. So whenever we create a project, I basically try to lead the performers that look, keep it flexible. So what you are doing on Monday, don't repeat it on Tuesday. It may change according to the um, audience's response. So many things happen. So we may travel, then we have to change it slightly. So if English in a Shakespeare, if 70% is being um, performed in English here in UK, we said, look, let's do it other way around. That 70% in Bengali and 30% in English. Let's try. So it's always like it's experimenting and trying out that how best you can communicate that story. And of course, you have an objective that yes, I am sharing the story in a different way. Because you're very interested in Shakespeare, aren't you? Yes. And you've done some yeah. plays yeah. in uh, both countries. Yeah. So how do you bring uh, a production from one country to the, the other and back again? I mean, you say that, you know, even they, you tell your um, performers to change. Sure. Yeah. Um, what are the kind of tools you use to help them change or be flexible? Uh, what kind of tools? Ah, to um, lots of negotiation, discussion, and I would say that improvisations. So we try out that, look, let's do it. Then uh, I always use the metaphor that, look, tell the story to a five-year-old kid. So think that they, are, they don't understand your language. So how best you can balance the spoken word and the physicality of it. So there is a very good balance that we try that is the physical storytelling. The, what is the physical narrative? Um, and the pictures, uh, yeah, the still pictures, and each picture, what it is telling about that scene. Three pictures, ten pictures. So it is basically working on those kind of very, um, I would say, that rigidity. Then you go into the, <laughs> uh, I would say, that the fine, kind of um, very specific kind of details we work yeah. Talking about specific then, can sure. you give us a specific example? Because I think the Julius Caesar is all female cast. Sure, you. sure. Can you talk about that one, for example? Yeah, um, now that was a challenge in the sense I didn't have any idea what I'm going to do. Hmm. There are directors, they, I, I admire their work, I admire their kind of um, planning and uh, their uh, work method. So I just brought them together. And then day one speech, I said, look, I'm a good cook, I believe. So <laughs> you are very good ingredients. So let's try to cook together. Hmm. And the, we didn't change the gender, meaning that Brutus's wife was a she still. So there are some challenges that is it a uh, um, lesbian play. So we kept it open that, look, we are not going to deal with that. Hmm. Um, so Julius Caesar was like, what political in implication it has in Bangladesh, for example, because there are political upheavals, neighboring country in India, if uh, may I uh, recall Indira Gandhi, a Democrat, then she became an autocrat, she was killed. So you see that that is one model. So he said, look, let's focus into that how we, everyone, carry a dictator inside us. Everyone has got something here that they, at some time, they want to control, yeah? And power, um, uh, authority, yeah? Let's work around that. If we can convey that to the audience, yeah, that how we change with power, um, conspiracy, and lust for power. At the same time, how our relationships work within that power structure. This is what we discussed. These are the matter, I mean, aspects we discussed, and it moved on. And of course, uh, music, then uh, Bengali and English fusing it together. Um, I would say it's more experimental. Then you reach to a point, and it's editing, basically, yeah. 
So in a sense, it's like almost a um, kind of opposite of um, Shakespeare when he had only males sure. in his, his performance, yeah. in the cast, and he had only females. Sure. Did you find that uh, something that was quite interesting to, 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 to work with? Um, in general, I think that women actors, they are hardworking. That's my, my you know, sometimes, of course, I don't want to be biased, but I think that the dedication, sometimes you say, oh my God, yeah, finishing rehearsal at 10 o'clock. We rehearse like 14 to 16 hours a day. Hmm. And that kind of dedication, that was one gift. And um, there are other kind of inner conflicts as human beings, as actors, uh, I had to handle that, yeah. But I tried to channelize that energy, that kind of conflict into the play, uh, because the Brutus or Caesar, or uh, Mark Antony. So I said, look, we'll discuss this. Why don't you bring that conflict into the play? Yeah, let it yeah, flow into your acting. Um, yeah, I think that I had to negotiate a lot within, uh, when, while rehearsing, we have to negotiate a lot. Yes. So in a sense, that's a very transnational way of working because it is a, an English playwright sure. working with a Bengali group of people. And um, does that kind of transnational experience, um, you know, that you've lived through yourself, does that inform an, an ident a cultural identity of some sort? Um, because I don't have a cultural identity. Oh, that's interesting. I, I don't have, I don't believe into that, and that's a huge debate I always face. I say, look, I'm a rootless person, um, so don't talk to me about root. Uh, why? why do you feel, maybe it's important for other people to think, why you don't have a transnational identity or you don't have a cultural identity when they look at you sure. and they immediately put you in a box? Sure. Um, people do, we all do, isn't it? So. Um, that's, that's, I'm not, believe me, I have no problem with that, yeah. The, going back to the um, Julius Caesar cast, I mean, it was not only Bengali and English. So, um, a French girl, Iraqi, British, American, two Americans, uh, one Indian, two Indians actually, Bangladeshis, and one, the lighting was done by a Korean lady. So. That was a transnational kind of casting because I wanted to see that how they come with their experience of dictatorship, authority, democracy, power, lust. Um, so I think that I identified in a sense, I'm a displaced person. I never had a root anyway. Hmm. Uh, do artists they have? That is my question. That's, maybe I'm searching for that. Once you have rooted, you are planted somewhere then you don't move, you don't grow anymore, you don't move. So I don't identify myself with that. So why should I tell or propagate that theory? So I, I don't have any trans, uh, uh, cultural identity. Uh, but I don't suffer from identity crisis. That is imposed by the media, that is imposed by the society, or oh, he is suffering from identity crisis, what we are talking about, what kind of identity crisis, yeah. You are, we are, pretty, we are artists, we go, we fit into somewhere, uh, we want to tell stories, isn't it? That's, that's what I understand. So I, I, I don't identify myself at all uh, as a cultural kind of, we are conveying any cultural message, no, no. Yeah, so if you don't have any kind of focus in terms of your identity, um, how do you, um, um, you know, work, reach different audiences? Because some audiences might go, oh, you know, it's South Asian or it's Bangladeshi, it's got nothing to do with me. Why should I go and see a performance um, by Mukul? And others might say, actually, it has relevance to me as a Bangladeshi. Sure. Uh, so you've got two kind of opposing things and obviously everything in between. True. Now, uh, let us discuss, if pe when people listen to music, do they say, oh, that's South Asian music, I'm not going to listen, it's, it's not making me feel better, it, it is not conveying me a different picture, different image. When they go to see a dance program, do they say, oh, it's just 
Indian dance, it's Chinese, it's ballet. We just go to be entertained. So what I'm, my, my point is, if they think that this is a Bangladeshi theater, I don't, they want to box me, is their, their problem, not my problem. I'm just telling a story, that's what I understand. But how do you cope with that problem? Um, or do you prefer not to? I, I prefer not to kind of focus into that. If, if it's a good quality, it's like food, isn't it? That you never ask that, if I go to a Vietnamese restaurant, I never ask that, is your chef Vietnamese or Indian or Pakistani or American? The question is what the quality, the authenticity of the food. So it's a piece of art. If the audience, they say, yes, we enjoyed it. First and foremost is entertainment. That's fine. And the message underneath, if I have managed to convey that, then I'd say that, yes, something had, has been achieved. Yeah. Because some of the um, community participants who are we are having our, our, our chats with, they feel that actually theatre didn't have any relevance to themselves, mm -hmm. that, that, um, and, then, and if any relevance, and that was the reason why they didn't go to it, because they didn't feel connected with it. Sure. Sure. Now, what do you say to those people? And do you think there's, um, they're particularly in the rural areas sure. as well, they're not from cities, you know? Oh. So they have a very different environment in which they, they live in. Sure. And so theatre is kind of not really something they w would discover. Sure. What do you say to those people? Um, I think they're, the theatre makers, they failed. It's not the audience's uh, um, fault. We, we failed them. Possibly theatre became elitist and not welcoming them, not telling their stories. So if something becomes very elitist or uh, like not welcoming them, that they don't feel welcome, we are not telling their stories, then why should they come? That is, that is the question. We took uh, Romeo and Juliet to a rural village, allow me to say that. It's a, um, um, what is, um, waving people and they are uh, um, agrarian people, you know, they don't, even they didn't speak proper Bengali. So we did it deliberately uh, under a banyan tree with only four lights. And after that, I personally, just ask people that, did it make any sense? Did you understand what you didn't understand? They said, it's clear. She fell in love and the family was not. A... So, it's the way you're telling the story. Is it, uh, does it touch their feelings, their uh, aspirations, their stories, their imagination? I think that we, we have to kind of attract. If they don't come to the theater, theater people has to go to. You see, I think that's the transnational experience because that comes from a more informal way of sure. producing theatre in Bangladesh. Sure. In this country, it's become highly sophisticated, highly expensive, yeah. full of production values. Oh, yeah. You have lost the actual essence of what theatre is initially. Sure. Sure. Um, and that, for me, is a conflict, you see. Absolutely, absolutely. So, going back to the globe, I mean, if we... Uh, he, he, what history tells us that at, in Globe, people from all strata, they came to, isn't it, the kings, the royalty to the ordinary working class people, they drank, they, it was a, like a pub culture, isn't it, they came, they attained, they just vented out, yeah, they laughed, they cried, they screamed, because those stories are so nicely done, they were most welcome at the Globe. So, today's theatre, as you said, is very clinically kind of, you know, it is, uh, I'm sure, it is um, uh, disinfected. So you have to go there, you don't talk, even I get irritated when someone is, but in the old day, olden days, definitely people, isn't it, discussed, they talked, they responded, that is live theatre. Hmm. Used to be. Slowly it became very elitist and only people who are high, you know, educated. They have the right to go to theater. So we have alienated people. It's not their fault. So they feel they're not welcome. And of course, there is a challenge of um, television, film. That's a separate issue. Um, but I think that we failed them. 
and too much politics, uh, kind of, it is not entertainment anymore. Some theater. They became too intellectually kind of engaging, hmm. too d difficult, too complicated. Um, the language is not people's language anymore. So I think that we have to ask, you know, it's a, it's a question for ourselves that how we are going to deal with this problem, this challenge. So in a sense, it's a kind of, to me, a kind of class division within theater Absolutely. audiences. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Or do um, you think it's inevitable if you come, you know, you have a very sophisticated um, society, you know, because even in in the realms of science and technology, we have a huge amount of sophistication, sure. you know, and people can afford these technological devices that somebody else cannot, and therefore they've never experienced it. Sure, sure. Um, I actually don't know, believe me, that is it inevitable you ask that question. Um, um, I, I, have, I, I don't know. I can't answer this How question. How about if I sort of um, ask you to think about in terms of your medical practice or, un, or education from before? Yeah. For example, you know, you've got all the different specialists in medical sure. field, you know, you, because no one doctor can encompass all these different sure. skills. Sure. And that is quite important in, in a medical field. Do you sure. think it's equally important in, in theatre? Is it important in theatre um, to have this kind of speciality, audience of speciality, producers, speciality, artists? Yes and no, because I mean, in medicine, the discipline, isn't it? And the, um, I think that meeting the target or, or the time frame, you have to set exams, of course, you have to understand, you have to you know, go through the experiments, that's fine. But I think theatre is much wider than that. But the intensity, the honesty of the operation theater, I always give that, that a surgeon has to be, has to know what they're doing, yeah? What they want to achieve. So that helps that, yes, you have to be uh, spot on, knowing what you want to do, uh, what, is, what you want to achieve, how, we are not doctors of the society, but we are trying to show the possibilities of how to cure the society, maybe, what are the possibilities. So there I see some kind of link or a metaphor that um, uh, theatre makers are, in a sense, they, they tell, they expose the diseases of a society. Yeah. I'm probing you here because, um, you, you know, you say that theatre is entertainment. Um, so, you know, the medical profession is to keep people healthy and to sure. maintain health. However, there's still different, different divisions of what kind of health. So would you have different divisions of what kind of entertainment? Um, no, I, I would say that purely is entertainment. I don't want to divide that, okay, this is this kind of pornographic entertainment or uh, uh, pure Puritan entertainment. Entertainment, if people accept it, that the artist possibly mission our vision is that how to heighten the quality, how to heighten their taste slowly or um, according to the need of the society. That is the artist's du duty, I believe, that yes, you have to raise the stakes, um, but entertainment, first and foremost. Then what you want to say, your politics, your philosophy, your vision, that's the secondary thing. But of course they go hand in hand, you cannot separate them. But in a sense, that's then your cultural identity as a practitioner, that it is entertainment in general. Um, because, um, you know, different practitioners with different cultural identities would perhaps look at it differently. You know, everybody's different. So in a sense, that's a description of who you are and your identity as your artistic identity. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. And how did you manage to get to that point? That would be interesting. Because obviously somebody who doesn't think like you would have taken a different journey. Sure. How do you think you've taken your journey? Perhaps you could explain to us a little bit how your journey has come to where you are today now. Um, I think that, is it 
consciously we change? I don't think so. That we take a decision, look, I'm becoming an Englishman, so I'll behave like an Englishman. You don't. It, it happens. So it's like taking, eating food. We don't know. We never just do, okay, this is, I'm, uh, I mean, e eating an apple or I'm having a biryani, so this is going to, you know, help me. Uh, um, physically, but what happens, that's the residue, isn't it? Slowly transforms. So I would say, um, uh, it, it happens subconsciously, subconsciously. But I think that fair amount of uh, confidence, know-how, and, and, and support from other people, um, that shaped my journey, I would say. I, I don't know, uh, have I <laughs> answered your question, but it is very difficult to nail down that yes, this was the journey because it happens subconsciously. Yeah. It's an autopilot, isn't it? That you start the journey and you reach somewhere and you, you just uh, never set a goal. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, we artists are wondering, kind of, isn't it? That we are just moving, floating all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you just, searching for new destinations, new goals. So you reach, then you leave that space again, you are moving to another space, so yeah. So within this floating journey of yours, have you encountered any kind of traumatic experiences that have actually made you sit up and take stock of your, your work and how you're producing your work? Um, it does all the time, isn't it? Meaning that there are, um, and the industry is full of deception, full of um, heartache, betrayal, but you don't focus into that. Yes, it, 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 it um, sort of um, influences you, but they don't dictate your journey. Because you have a certain kind of, it's, it's the passion and persuasion, yeah? That, uh, so yes, I, I face that, we all do, not, only me. Uh, you have to rise above these things, isn't it? Uh, the negativity, because I don't believe that an artist can create any form of art. Uh, I mean, keeping in mind jealousy, anger. Anger is possibly, but uh, vengeance or that kind of you know, negative aspects cannot create good art. You have to be kind of very open-minded, all-embracing, trying it out. And then you see what is the result. Uh, Can you give us any specific examples? Um, then I have to name people which I don't want to, because that was a huge kind of, you know, that... Uh, I, I didn't say that they tried, but it was like the situation was like basically soul-destroying. And that time, possibly, I interpreted it, that that person had something personally against me, and the jealousy thing, because nobody actually, when it is very competitive, uh, I mean, artists can, we can be very, very nasty at the same time. We give so much to the world, isn't it? At the same time, at times, we are very, very narrow-minded. Huh? That is what I learned before starting theatre, I didn't realise. Everything was for me, oh my God, these are the great people. They're always giving, caring, uh, supporting. Then you realise, no. Uh, it's also the animal thing, isn't it, that you have your own territory, you don't allow yeah, the other one coming. Having said that, but I met more positive and generous people than my negative experience, because enormous gift, I mean, always being supported by um, such great-minded people. I, I am I'm more, I'm very thankful to them for my journey, because the support all the time. Uh, they're providing, they're asking, they're giving, and that's a blessing as an artist that to get this kind of attention. Yeah. Talking about support, you know, when you change your line of uh, your direction sure. uh, in in life, did you get any support from your family and friends? Um, difficult question. Family was not extremely happy. Immediate family, parents were like, okay, if you want to pursue that career, it was a shock for them, and I don't blame them. Uh, very um, South Asian, I'm using the word, uh, middle class family, the aspirations are very, uh, I would say, guided by the social kind of demands and hmm, that needs. You go for medicine, law, 
um, is it uh, accountancy, huh? engineering, these are the norms of the society. So you cannot blame them for that. But I think that, yes, my family was very supportive. Hmm. But the extended family, still they ask, what do you do? Why don't you practice? Then, okay, with the initially very shy and I very kind of, you know, I said, look, I work in theater. Hmm. But what do you do? <laughs> so, well, even in this country, they don't take theater seriously, isn't it? It's a hobby. It's not a profession. So I think that we have, I have to carry that all my life, that stigma that actually he is unemployable or unemployed because he's doing nothing. Theater cannot be a profession. Art cannot be a profession. So yes, I had from friends and family um, some support, I would say. Very cautious. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I just read um, today that the family, um, the third profession that most interests young boys now is to be a dancer, ah. which is an amazing shift. Sure, yeah. sure. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. First thing is still to be a doctor, though. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, yes. And how, so you, you've now kind of worked in theatre all your professional life. Have you, uh, how would you say the changes in theatre have taken place and how, what is the state of theatre today? Um, then again, it, in what context we are talking about, isn't it? West End is flourishing. Isn't it? I'd say that the main theatre houses, for example, I have enormous kind of uh, liking for the national, what they're doing now. It's a huge shift because um, 10 years back, how many black theatres we enjoyed at the national, but now it's regular program being uh, programmed at the national. So I think that we are much more visible now. Hmm. and less excuses, oh, I can't do this because they don't, who are this they and we? I don't believe into that. If I want to do something and I have enough conviction, I'll do it. So I think that, yes, this is the time, there is no excuse anymore or asking for favors. So that is the change, I believe, that now it is the time for action. Uh, lots of opportunities, lots of uh, 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 kind of challenges are there, but lots of opportunities there to tell our stories. If we want to say in that context, that our, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So there's far more British South Asian theatre as well now, isn't there? Mm. And do you feel that this, uh, this theatre now um, accurately depicts um, South Asian, the South Asian community and the South Asian values and culture? Should be. I'm sure they are. But then again, my, then we cannot complain that, oh, look, they are not taking us very seriously because we are trying to box ourselves. We are trying to confine within that comfort zone. And does it matter to the wider audience? Uh, 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 if we want to be counted, yeah, I'm, again, I'm saying we, is it which we? Mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm sure they are doing, but I, I don't think that that's, that's the journey of the future. I don't think so. So what do you think the journey of the future is? Um, telling stories different ways, innovation, challenging the stereotype, and um, innovation, I believe, that it has to be innovative, it has to be dynamic, it has to tell the story of today. It's not the back home all the time, yeah? The luggage is there and bringing it here and saying, look, this is I'm opening in front of you. Uh, possibly that's not going to appeal anymore, the audience. Mm -hmm. So do you find that's a stereotype then? I, I think lots of it is a stereotype, yes. 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 Okay. Um, the auntie is running away with uh, a neighbor, a neighboring uncle or who is getting uh, what kind of you know, affiliations of what happened back home, uh, forced marriage. We know about this, but what's new? Mm. Because human experiences, that is what we are interested. Uh, we express different ways, of course, but our experiences are very similar. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. So, um, how could you let us know what um, work you're 
of your own that you know you like to share with us as something that you're really pleased and successful with? That's very <laughs> difficult, isn't it? Uh, um, in the sense that um, success, how do we measure it? So is it financial success or the audience, they enjoyed it? We managed to retail a story. Um, very difficult to measure for me um, or blowing on trumpet. But um, still I would say that um, um, Julius Caesar, all female, I really enjoyed and people, they, the way female audience in Bangladesh reacted to that. I really, I didn't expect that. So that was the unexpected coming from the audience. The waiting there asked me so many questions. Um, I, I really, really cherish that. Yeah. And I'm never satisfied with my work. I'm happy what I'm doing, but it's the satisfaction, you know, it's, no. Um, Romeo and Juliet, of course, it has its own journey, telling the known story in a different way. Um, um, also, I think we did another Shakespeare's uh, uh, Rape of Lucrece, which is a poetry and, you know, just long in Bulgarian and English. I think I like that one also. Yeah, so it had something very mysterious and the Shakespearean elements came out. Um, yeah, and Devdas, I was very satisfied in a sense. Yeah, I'm not happy, but I'm satisfied because we tried to tell, connect the stories of Devdas in a British context. So that was another journey and uh, the audience feedback, yes, they understood the story. It was not confined within the history context. It's a very British 60s, 70s, this hippie hair flower revolution. Um, yeah, it was enjoyable, that, that uh, storytelling. And what about the, about the future? Uh, various stories. And now few writers are helping, kind of adapting Indian stories into a British context. That is my kind of, I'm fascinated that how, for how wonderful stories exist there, but never been told in this country. So why not trying to negotiate that? And also a few Shakespeare stories um, and a large scale musical that I'm just thinking and planning. Let's see how it goes and uh, why not trying in a different way, a musical. Um, mm, and maybe one day an opera. So that would be another challenge. Challenging yours, isn't it, my, myself, that yes, how far we, I can extend my imagination. And uh, always I'm ready to fail and learn from that failure, isn't it? Because you learn from that. So um, that would be my journey and taking, working with various uh, different, I mean, how shall I say, that uh, talented people, the imaginative people coming together. I want to challenge them. They will, I want them to challenge me and uh, try to create new work. That would be the future journey. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.